What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. If you're stopping by the channel for the first time, please consider subscribing to my channel. And while you're at it, smash that like button for me. I really would appreciate it. Also, hit that post notification bell so that you're notified every time I upload a new video. Be careful down in the comment section of the videos. A lot of spam, a lot of scammers. I will never ask you to contact me by WhatsApp or Telegram. I also do not invest money for my subscribers, so please be careful. Don't get yourself scammed. If you want up to 12 free stocks, Weeble is going to give you up to 12 free stocks when you open a new Weeble brokerage account. Put any amount of money in that brokerage account. They're going to give you up to 12 free stocks for just trying out their brokerage app. There's a link down in the description box of the video. Go click on that Weeble link. Open up your new brokerage account today. Go get that free stock. Go get that free money. 311,000 new jobs were added to the economy in February 2023. Expectations were 205,000 jobs would be added to the economy in February. Well, needless to say, that number was blown away by the 311,000 new jobs. New job or new job openings where people have the ability to find work is not necessarily all a bad thing. But when you got inflation above 6% and we can't get people to stop spending money on things they don't need, then that's a problem for our economy. Really what we'd like to have is about 180,000 new jobs added, like we did from 2010 to 2019, when we had a really good economy, inflation was about 2%, and everything was humming right along and doing great. But with inflation at 6% and possibly could climb back to historical all-time highs of 9%, when we add 311,000 new jobs, that's not good. Because I've always told you guys, in this country, the more money we make, the more money we spend. And a lot of that is by design. 70% of our economy is fueled by consumer spending. So our economy depends on people taking their hard-earned money and buying things they really don't need. And that is hurting us from an inflationary standpoint though, because the people in our country, lower income folks are starting to struggle because prices of our goods and services are up so high that they barely can afford the basic things they need to live. And that's where the Federal Reserve comes in. See, the Federal Reserve wants price stability and price stability right now is not very good. Because like I said, low income Americans are having a hard time buying their basic necessities. So the Fed jumps in and does what? They increase short term interest rates, AKA Fed funds rate, in an effort to try and deter people from borrowing money cheaply. And when they do that, they hope people will stop spending. The problem is, even though they're increasing short-term interest rates and making it harder for people to borrow money and use to buy things they don't need. But when people got jobs and they're getting raises on those jobs and it's not hard for them to find a new job, guess what? They keep spending. They just keep spending out of the income that they're making as opposed to going to a bank and borrowing money to spend. So really, the Fed wants companies to feel the pain as well. And they're gonna keep raising short-term interest rates because they know when money gets too expensive for companies to borrow cheaply, companies do what? They stop borrowing. And when most companies stop borrowing, they don't have money to expand and grow and do R&D and ultimately make more profit. See, a lot of these companies use that cheap money that they borrow in order to fuel growth. But when money's too expensive to borrow, companies just shut down. 
They don't, they don't try to expand. They don't try to grow. And when they don't grow or expand, they start laying off people. And the Fed knows at some point that will happen. But they're going to have to get more aggressive on rates in order to move that time frame up. It was widely expected when the Fed meets on March 21st and 22nd that they would increase short-term interest rates by 25 basis points. But now there are a lot of analysts and economists out there saying that the Fed will probably increase short-term interest rates by 50 basis points in that March 21, 22 meeting. We also have the CPI report that'll be coming out March 14th. And that's going to tell us what inflation is doing. Hopefully, that CPI report for February tells us inflation is still coming down. Hopefully. Because if it tells us inflation has U-turned and it's starting to go back up, guys, you're talking about a sell-off in the stock market. It's going to really sell off. Now, as investors, that may not be a bad thing for us, right? Because we're trying to buy paper assets at a discount. We know if we can buy these paper assets at, at, at below what they're historically traded for, we buy them low and we hold them, we have the opportunity to create some net worth for ourselves over the next two to three years. So, yeah, I want the economy to get better. But I, I'm also understanding that it's going to be a while before the economy gets better. Because if that, if the labor market doesn't cool off, I'm telling you, man, inflation is not going to come down. And the longer inflation stays up, guess what the Fed has to do? Keep increasing interest rates. They're going to keep increasing them, guys, until the labor market cools down and inflation cools down. Because that's really one of their main tools they have to fight inflation is the short-term interest rate. If we keep raising interest rates, we run the risk of throwing the economy into a recession. I don't know, guys. I'm going to be certainly tuned in to next week when that CPI report comes out for February. And that will be some additional data that the Fed will have for their March 21 and 22 meeting. And at that meeting, the Fed is going to strike. Whether it'll be 25 basis point hike or a 50 basis point hike, only time will tell. Either way, guys, we got to be ready as investors. Make sure you're doing everything you can to align your financial situation where you can buy assets. If you got that high interest rate credit card debt, man, I've been telling you guys for months, pay it off. Pay it off. Because I'm telling you, credit card interest rates are directly tied to short-term interest rates. Every time they go up, your credit card interest rate is going to go up. And if you got balances outstanding, you're going to get wiped out, man. So do everything in your power to take your resources, your financial resources, and pay off those high interest rate credit cards. Do yourself that favor. When you get that out of the way, make sure the next thing you do is you got to have that emergency fund, three to six months of your expenses tucked away for a rainy day. Third thing, invest. Number one, get them credit cards paid off. Number two, get that emergency fund together. And then number three, be ready to invest. Be ready to have whatever amount of money you can afford to invest and keep in the market for the next three to five years. Be ready to deploy that money next week and at the end of the month once the Fed meets. Because it may be an opportunity for us to buy some assets at a deep discount. Drop me some comments down in the comment box and let me know what you think about the February jobs report. 311,000 new jobs added when we expected only 205,000 would be added. Man, red hot labor market. Need that labor market to cool off, guys, if we're going to get inflation down. If you want those 12 free stocks from Weeble, click on that link down in the description box. Open up your new Weeble account today, guys. Go get that free stock. Go get that free money. If you're stopping by the channel for the first time, please consider subscribing, share the video, smash the like button. Thoughts become things. You can see it in your mind. You can hold it in your hands. You guys keep chasing your greatness. Never stop believing in yourself. I'm going to catch you on the next video. Peace. Today's video is sponsored by my company, RF Financial Consulting. 
And in my company, I work with individuals just like you through financial mentoring and coaching sessions. And in those one hour sessions, we talk about strategies to help you get to your financial freedom, whether it be through real estate investing, stock market investing, creating additional streams of income, credit card arbitrage, or starting and growing a business. If that's something that you might be interested in, there's an email address in the description box of the video. Send me an email and let's discuss if I'm the right fit for you.